हेलो एवरीवन इन टूडेज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट टॉप ट्वेंटी मोस्ट एस्क लिनिक्स इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चंस एंड आंसर्स माय सेल्फ मोहम्मद जुबैर एंड दिस चैनल इज ऑल अबाउट शोइंग यू हाउ टू बिकम ए हाईली पेड आईटी प्रो रियली फास्ट सो विदाउट एनी फर्दर अडियो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड Number 1 What do you mean by Linux? Well Linux is an open source operating system and it is based on Linux and was first introduced by Linus Torvalds. One of the primary purposes of developing the Linux was to offer and provide the users with a free operating system, especially to those users who could not afford the operating systems that were paid like we have Windows, iOS or Unix. Number 2 What are the basic components of Linux? Well Linux consists of five components or elements. Number 1 is kernel. It is considered to be a core or main part of Linux and it is responsible for all the major activities of the operating system like process management, device management etc. Number 2 system library. Well these are special programs or functions with the help of which different application program or different system functions can access the needed features of the kernel it simply gets used to implement the functionality of the operating system number 3 system utility well these are small utility programs that are responsible for performing specialized and individual level tasks they are considered more reliable and they also allows the user to manage the computer number 4 hardware well it is a physical hardware that is composed of different components such as cpu mouse keyboard display etc then at last we have shell it is an environment where we can execute and run our commands shell scripts and programs it works like an interface between the user and kernel that hides all complexities of the back end functions of the kernel from the user it gets used to execute different commands number 3 what do you mean by lilo well lilo is also known as the linux loader it is basically a boot loader that gets used to load the linux in the memory and then starts the operating system it is also known as the boot manager that helps and facilitates the dual boot of a computer it can work two ways a master boot program or a secondary boot program along with performing different functions such as locating the kernel loading the memory identifying other supporting programs starting your kernel etc in case you want to use the linux operating system you must have to install special boot loader number 4 What do you mean by Linux shell and what types of shells are there? Well, Linux shell can be considered as the interface between the user and the kernel. It gets used for the execution of different commands and for communication with the Linux operating system. Linux shell is a program or you can also call a utility that the user uses to execute different commands in their Linux distribution. it simply takes the human readable command as the input and then converts them into the language that is understandable by the kernel if we talk about different types of kernel well we have ksh which is known as corn shell then we have csh that is known as c shell then we have tcsh zsh and we also have bash which is a very prominent one and it is also called as born again shell number 5 What do you mean and know by demons? Well, demons are the background processes, or they also known as the long-running Linux programs that works and run in the background. Any terminal cannot control them, and because of that, they run in the background. These processes starts in the background when the system gets bootstrapped, and they get terminated only when we shut down the system. It is one of the simplest ways of extending the functionality of the base operating system 
as it offers and provides several functions which are not available otherwise in the operating system. What are some of the differences between Cron and Anacron? Well, I'll talk about both of them one by one. Anacron is a Linux program that gets used for executing the task at certain intervals. It works best on such machines that are powered on for weeks or days. Cron It is a program that gets used for executing the task to a scheduled time and it works perfectly or is considered ideal for the machine that run continuously. Now let's talk about some of the differences and I'll talk about Anacron first. While it is not a daemon program and it only supports super users and only super users can use this. It works best and is considered ideal for laptops and desktops. We use this where systems are not expected to run 24-7. It is used where commands are supposed to be executed periodically. Now let's talk about cron. It is a daemon program. It can be used and scheduled by any type of users. It is ideal for server machines and it is used where systems are expected to run 24-7. It gets used where we execute and schedule commands. Number 7. What do you mean by load average in Linux? Well, as the name or term suggests, Load average is the total average system load on the Linux server and gets calculated over a given period of time. This load average of Linux servers can be found out by using a straightforward command in terminal and the commands are top and up time. It simply gets used to keep track of the system resources. Number 8. What are CLI and GUI? Well, CLI stands for the command line interface and we do not have any graphical unit in it. We enter different commands to run and execute different functions and programs and it takes text as input, translate it for the operating system and then perform the needed function. We need to have less memory than other interfaces. And not only that, we can also use the low resolution monitor for it as well. GUI stands for Graphical User Interface. It works as a human computer interface with the help of which we can interact with our operating system. For example, we use a mouse or keyboard to use different icons, buttons on the screen, links, etc. These graphical elements make it easier for the users who do not know how to use system otherwise. Number 9. What do you mean by SSH? And how can we use it? Well, SSH stands for Secure Shell. It is a protocol used to connect to remote servers securely. It allows two systems or servers to communicate with each other securely. And it is one of the most common ways of communication and access for remote Linux servers as data gets transmitted over the encrypted channels, which is why it is considered secure. To connect to a remote server or a machine via SSH, you must have a domain and IP address. Number 10. What do you know about file permissions in Linux? Well, in Linux, we have three kinds of file permissions. Read, write, and execute. Read allows the users to open and read the files only. Write allows the users to open and even modify the files. Execute allows the users to run or execute the files. We can change the permission associated with any files and directory for the users. We can do that with the help of chmod command. There are two modes of chmod command, symbolic mode and absolute mode. Number 11. Name some of the Linux directory commands. Well, mainly we have five directory commands in Linux. These are pwd, ls, cd, mkdir, rmdir. Well, pwd gets used to display the current directory or current working directory on the terminal. ls command is used to list all the files and directories in your present working directory. cd is used to change your present working directory. mkdir is used to create a new directory in the system. RMDIR is used to remove a directory from the system and I'll have the example of that as well in the upcoming questions. Number 12. 
what is the main difference between rmdir and rm space hyphen r well both are the commands used to delete a directory from the system we have two types of directories in linux the empty one and those which are not empty in not empty directories we have some files or directories in them so for such directories that are not empty we have to use the rm space hyphen r command otherwise we cannot delete such directories with the help of rmdir rmdir gets used where we have empty directories number 13 what do you mean by desktop environment well desktop environment is a metaphor for implementing a bundle of programs that run on top of operating system and they have some graphical user interface usually it includes everything like how the windows feels and look the style of icons file folders and different customization options different linux distributions offer different desktop environments we have many desktop environments available and in use such as gnome kde xfce mate etc number 14 how can you copy a file in linux well to copy a file in linux we use the cp command and the syntax is like this cp space your source then space your destination mean from where you want to copy your file and then you will enter your destination where you want to copy it let's say you want to copy a file named as file.txt from your desktop/work directory to your download/work directory then the command will be like this cp name of the file which is file.txt obviously space backslash desktop backslash work this is your source it means you are going to copy your file from here then you will give it another space and now you will write your destination which will be downloads backslash work and now you will be able to copy your file from your desktop to your downloads number 15 what is the difference between the cp command and move command or it is also called as cp and mv while with the help of cd command we make a copy of a file and paste it to another place or directory in our linux distribution it is just like copying and pasting in the windows operating system on the other hand it cuts the file with the move command and then pastes it into the new directory means if you move a file from place a to place b the file will not be there anymore at the place a it is just like cut paste in the windows operating system number 16 what to do when a program fails to execute or how to kill a process or program in linux every running process in linux has a process id at the back end even a program has its process id let's say you were running a process and it got stuck and a process has locked the resource and you want that resource for some other work in that case we can kill that particular process with the help of our ps command we can list out all the running processes on the terminal and then with the help of kill command we can kill that process let's say the id of the process that you want to kill is 1 2 3 and the command will be sudo space kill space hyphen 9 Hyphen nine is basically a flag here. Then space, and then write the ID of the process, which was one two three four in our case. And in most of the cases, the process ID will be composed on four digits. Number seventeen. How can you create a file without opening it? Or how can you create a file from the terminal? Well, we can create a file in the Linux operating system through our terminal. with the help of the touch command for example let's say you want to create a file on the desktop for that purpose we'll move to our desktop with our cd command and the command will be cd space desktop now we can create a file simply by using the touch command let's say i want to create a file with the name of skills build so i will use the command like this touch space skills build dot txt it would create a file if you want a file with a different extension create a file with that desired extension 
and you will have that file. Number 18. Why do we use export command? Well, we use the export command to set and reload our environment variables. For example, let's say you want to set the path for Java. The command will be like this export space Java underscore home equals backslash home backslash user backslash Java backslash bin. Number 19. What is the top command and why do we use it? The top is a command or you can also say that it is a utility used to summarize all the processes running in the system along with the resources used by each process at a particular moment. It also gives information about the total memory used by the operating system, free memory and some other information as well. Just write top in the terminal and hit enter to use this or you can install its better version with a simple command. If you are using Ubuntu or Ubuntu based Linux distribution, the command is sudo space apt space install space htop. After installation, just write htop in the terminal and you are good to go. Number 20. What do you mean by shell scripts? Well, as the name suggests, it is a script written for the shell. By script, we mean the programming language used to control the application. With its help, we can execute different commands that are entered in the shell. Other than that, it allows you to create complex programs with the help of conditional statements, functions, loops, etc. So these were some 20 questions that you can consider for your interview. And that brings us to the end of today's video. If you have loved watching this video, please leave a like, subscribe and press the bell icon. We'll get back to you in the next video. Till then, take care.